video should start with me using our new remote control for our new camera. Let's take, take your time here. Welcome to Tana Grips, everyone. We're Tracy. Jill Mott. Bringing you that fresh content in your glass. <laughs> <laughs> Especially today, because today we're going to talk about rosé, which who doesn't drink rosé in January? I said it before, I will say it again. I don't care, and I don't want to know. Britain, I do, yeah. is what we're saying. I'm getting political here. But, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but we know that now is a time where most people are drinking rosé, especially Labor Day is upon us, mm. cabins, stuff like that. So we wanted to talk about three very different styles of rosé. Well, four if you consider it the uh, party, bottle. party bottle, which really is just <laughs> common sense bottle, really, because it's ten glasses in a bottle. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll start here. So this is um, a little bit more esoterica than... Um, Maybe, hold on, let's just zoom. Let's use our zoom function, Britt. Let's do it. Zoom. Look at this cloudy little number. Cool. Can you see all that? Can you see that cloudy? Can you see, it? Can you see all the little floaties? Cool. Uh, and floaties is a term for beautiful wine diamond. Yes, um, that's, that's exactly <laughs> what it means. So, this is a really cool pet net that is, well, it's not a pet net. Uh, we'll talk about why in a moment, but a wine that is exclusive to Henry and Son. Um, second fermentation in the bottle. It's from Piemonte in Italy, so northwestern Italy. A couple, they moved from Milan to start making wine, and they wanted to do like an agro-tourism thing, mm. and planting some Barbera here, and it spends literally, it ferments to a dry wine, and then they take Barbera grape juice, or must mm. as we call it in the biz. They put it all in the bottle, put a little grape must, crown cap it, so in that way it's like a pet nat, mm -hmm. but it has a second fermentation in a bottle. So that's more like champagne. Mm -hmm. um, it's quite fizzy, it's got, but it's classified as frizzante. Um, and so in this way, um, this is going to be not as charged, not as, not as um, effervescent and strong as like a champagne. It's got a little bit more solar mm -hmm. bubbles, but super cool stuff. Yeah. What did you think when you had it? Um, a lot of grapefruit peel to it, but it was also this very excellent sour kombucha note to it. Definitely as sour. Well, like, and, and like a sour kombucha, like, and it was really, like, it really awakens the palate. Um, I remember really enjoying it with food. Like, I think just, it can really, like, it can really handle some cheese and some fat, like, thinking about Piedmont itself. Like, oh, yeah. Area. But it also has this amazing ability, because it does have some tannic drift. Uh, and I haven't had this vintage, so we're not going to rate. Um, but it's also got, like, I don't know, like, thinking about Piedmont, like, just, like, the herbaceousness of the region and, like, how they cook. I think that would be really fun. Like, I don't know. I could go through a lot of different courses. With it. Yeah, for sure. Um, this is done without any sulfur on it or sulfur in it. And mm -hmm. it is really great. Um, I've, I've had this vintage, and it is really tart. And Tannic Grip, I would say it's, like, about a... 1.5-ish, mm -hmm. maybe a little more because of the bubbles, but um, it's just gorgeous, really fun, and we're the only place that you can get it. Yeah. So, um, which I guess brings me to classic rosé. Yeah. Par excellence. What everybody thinks of when you're thinking of rosé. Mm -hmm. You're thinking of... Like classic French rosé. This oh, guy. We've got it. Or this gal. We got it. This one. Henry and Son. This one. They. <laughs> I don't know. Why not? <laughs> It's, it's it, why not? It's so appropriate. It's so good. Uh, yes. This <laughs> I'm gonna take it from here. Uh, the parasol <laughs> is our very classic Cote de Provence. Is not where it's from. Uh, Cote de Provence, and it's from um, way southern France. Tons of sun, a lot of sea influence. It's right on the ocean. This is kind of what brought rosé. Like rosé, kind of had like a little cheeky, like ooh, like no, no. It was kind of like. Not really taken very seriously or anything and people were like no it's delicious french rosé we've been making it forever and like this is it this is like incredibly like pretty and like delicate and it also has like a lot of like, really like light stone fruit like a lot of peach for me and like mm -hmm. nectarine as well as some floral notes and then some pretty like you know for me harbingers of provence would be like a little bit of a herbaceousness like fresh cut fresh cut herbs like bean herbs like tarragon as well and when a lot of people make rosé, like, we're lucky we have these cool cats now and people doing esoterica mm -hmm. and fun stuff. Before this, everybody was making this because mm -hmm. this is what is, it's non-offensive. Everybody wants to drink it. Everybody's going to like it. It's crowd pleaser. Um, 
you know, because it is Labor Day weekend, we are, we do have a handful of bottles, I think maybe six in-house of the Magnum, which is mm -hmm. literally a double bottle. So I would highly encourage you, if you think five glasses of wine is enough for your weekend, which that would maybe be enough for half of me, mm -hmm. then do the <laughs> bottle. <laughs> but if you think that you're going to maybe have some fun over Labor Day weekend and eat some cheese curds and whatnot. Yes, cheese curds with this. Cheese curds. I, think I, I would honestly say out of all three of the wines that we're talking about today, the, this is the perfect cheese curd pairing, 100%. Mm -hmm. I don't even far none. Um, Sanso grape, Syrah, mm -hmm. Grenache, Mouvedre. Yep. Classic grape varietals to make classic rosé, the blueprint of rosé the world over. Yeah. Until we have cats like Lydia and Paolo and Chris Brockway to break the mold a little bit. Shall we? Yes, let's do it. Yeah. Post Provence rose is essentially like if there's a family tree of rose, this is the tree. It is. It's yeah. the parent. That's where it begins. Yep. Uh, so this next producer, Chris Brockway, he's got an urban winery in, in Berkeley. I visited him in like 2012, I think, something like that. And he was already making natural wine, but he's, he was making um, natural style wines um, quite, a, quite a bit earlier, mm -hmm. like a few, few years earlier, at least, if not more. And middle part of last decade. And this is his white zin. His white zin used to look like this, and he decided, <laughs> took a few years off, and decided, okay, now we need to make something that has this kind of color, yeah. um, a bit darker. He blended it with, there's about 25% trousseau gris, which trousseau gris is a grape that is normally, some folks are making it into orange wines. Some folks are, would like blend it in with Chardonnays just to like expand the production. Here he's doing... He made them separate with like eight hours of maceration for the white zin and like six months of maceration for the trousseau gris and these huge sandstone yep. jars that are basically like amphora. They act like amphora. And then they tasted so good together when they got blended, mm -hmm. which I'm pretty sure was an accident. Like someone went to refill someone's glass of white zin and was like, here, taste this white zin. And it was actually... They had trousseau gris in their glass, and they were like, oh my gosh, this is delicious. Let's bottle it, it together. It's, and it's so fun. I mean, I, like, I like the trousseau gris is also, like, macerated on, like, skin, so it does add a lot of, a fair amount of texture mm. Um, mm. for the six months. And then that oxidative quality from, like, the sandstone is really cool. You are talking about earlier when we tasted it before the episode, and to me, it reminds me kind of of like a goose, like a sour beer that's been barrel fermented and doesn't have a ton of effervescence because it's a still wine. Um, it's just gorgeous. It's really, it's a bit funky for a rosé, but I, I love it. Yeah, and I was saying earlier, like, well, I understand that wine is a fermented product, but it tastes like, like it tastes fermented is what I started to say. And I'm like, but like, let me, it's like fermented cantaloupe, like perfectly right so like cantaloupe with flaky salt on it right when it's perfect like right when it's almost gonna be like bad the next day like that's what it reminds <laughs> me of like really all right let's do this and what are we how are we doing on time oh we're doing pretty good I don't know. I don't know. okay so what do we think on the tannic grip yeah. oh. are we, are we... i'm gonna say one one seven Ooh. Down growing? to the 10th. Yeah. Yeah. Like 1.5 and it grows to the 1.7 mm -hmm. and kind of keeps growing. You almost, I think last yeah. on last take, you were like, we both agreed. Like it's almost one like five, a 2-ish. You know? We're between 1, 5, 2. So mm -hmm. I think 1, 7. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Um, Love it. This we decided has like, what, a 0.5? Like or it's just, not overtly tannic is also. Like the, yeah, that's, that's on our tannic grip scale. <laughs> like if it's almost negligible. But it's it, it's extent, then it we say well, we, that's that can officially be on our scale. Measure. That's a measurement. Yeah, not overtly tannic. Not overtly yeah. tannic. I don't know. These are all super fun, and they're among many other wine and rosé options in the store. But it's just these are three very very interesting expressions, and the time is now. Drink mm -hmm. rosé, and Drink. then the time is January. <laughs> yeah, of course. Drink uh, some great stuff. Enjoy them over Labor Day weekend, of course. And then, like Britt said, the snow falls. Uh, don't be stuck in the cold without rosé, because I'm telling you. Stock up on some rosé. It's true. Stock up on the 2019s. The rest of the year. Amen. All right. Titanic rips. Titanic rips. Titanic rips.
Enjoy guys, be safe, enjoy the wine.